In this quick little tutorial, I want to briefly talk about the versions of CSS and how that affects you and your use of CSS in your websites. What I first want to tell you is that there are a few different versions of CSS floating around out there, different specifications, CSS1, CSS2, and CSS3. At this time, most of the major browsers, including IE and Firefox and so on, support the major functionality or the major uh, specifications in CSS 1 and 2. CSS 3 stuff, though, is, is very, very sketchy. So what's the difference between CSS 1 and 3 and 2 and, and the rest? Well, it's actually CSS 1, CSS 2, and CSS 3. Essentially, it has to do with the functionality of CSS. Everything that we've done in the CSS course is supported by all the major browsers. That means IE 6, 7, and 8, more 7 and 8, that's our real target, and Firefox and Safari. The key to all of this and what to take away from this is that you may be tempted at some point in some other, you might find other articles where they talk about some CSS3 capabilities or some rare CSS2.1 capabilities. And there's, there's some real cool stuff, no question. But what you're going to find is that many of these cool things are um, not supported very well in certain browsers. A lot of times, Internet Explorer doesn't do a great job with them. And since still the majority of people use Internet Explorer out there, something like 70% or more, depending on, you know, the particular website. Nonetheless, it's such a significant portion of people, it doesn't make sense to fiddle around with advanced CSS that the majority of the audience simply will not see. So let's look at this for a second. I'm at a Microsoft site here, MSDN site. And this is basically their information site for, for nerds. So I'm looking at the CSS compatibility and Internet Explorer. And this is a very technical article, and I'm not going to go through everything here. What you find on this page is, is a discussion as to how and what properties IE supports. So if we scroll down, you see it talks about the various selector types and attributes in CSS, like multi-column layout and so forth. So let's, let's look at a few things, for instance. So you see the version of IE, what it supports. Now, if you look at some things like, you see, you know, all these interesting CSS rules, they're supported by IE 7 and 8, partial support here, no support here. Um, we're not going to get into this here, but what you want to take a, away from this, that as we scroll down, we get some pretty good support here, but when we get into CSS 2.1 pseudo classes, we scroll down, we see a lot of this stuff is not supported, even in IE8, right? No, 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 no. And realistic today, realistically today, you have to support definitely IE7 and 8, and even to a certain extent IE6. At this time in 2009, Strangely enough, I still get on KellerSites.com maybe a 7-8% IE6 user. So I don't want to alienate 7 or 8% of my audience. That's just not cool. So look at all these CSS rules and all these selectors, that uh, pseudo classes rather, that we simply cannot use. So this is the reason why in the courses and in my teaching of CSS, I stick to the stuff that works across all the browsers, and I don't let myself get uh, lured in by these uh, these sometimes very cool CSS pro uh, capabilities, especially CSS3 stuff here, that none of the browsers support, and they won't for years. So there's just no point getting into it and wasting your time there. So to know what CSS to use, if you stick to the basic selector types, as we discussed in the videos, and you stick with those basics, you should be in a good position. There are charts out there that will show you the different, what browsers support, what functionalities you can come here, for instance. What you're going to find is that Firefox and Opera, and I believe the Safari browser, 
are usually a little bit ahead of Internet Explorer in terms of supporting the latest CSS features. It doesn't really matter though, because again, Internet Explorer is the majority of the audience. So you have, they're, they're the lowest common denominator and you're going to have to support them. So you can find charts on MSDN as we did here. Just do a search for CSS compatibility in Internet Explorer and you can find this. Another thing you can simply do is just, just test. Just try something out and test it out. As I tell programmers who work for me, test first, ask questions later. Ultimately, if you try something, just load it up in the browser and see if it works.